Hi, the rotation flap is one of the commonly done flaps in reconstructive surgery. In this video, we shall be dealing with the geometry of the flap, the markings to be made, the importance of the back cut and the different techniques of applying the back cut. We shall also be seeing the various clinical uses of the rotation flap and different situations in which it has been used. We shall also be dealing with the different modifications of the classic rotation flap the Ahuja's template flap and the divine rotation flap. We have already learnt that local flaps are of two types. Those that are based on pivotal movement like the transposition flaps and the rotation flaps and those that are based on advancing movement like the advancement flaps. It is the rotation flaps that we are going to talk about in this video. The rotation flap is a semicircular flap which is rotated around a pivot point in an arc of a circle till the defect is closed. Where one border of the defect becomes the advancing edge of the flap, it behaves like a revolving door. The advantages of the rotation flap are that there is no resultant secondary defect and the tension is distributed over a long suture line. On the downside, there is no tissue added and the rotation flap only depends on the elasticity of the surrounding tissues and a large flap is needed for small defects. Let us assume this is a lesion which is going to be excised and resurfaced with a rotation flap. First, the defect should be triangulated to make a triangle A, B, C. Two points are to be remembered when triangulating the defect. This triangle needs to be an isosceles triangle with the side AC being equal to BC. The second point to be remembered is that the apex of this isosceles triangle at the point C should be less than 30 degrees. Now the lesion and the triangulated marking have been excised. This is the defect for which the rotation flap is being planned. The side opposite the apex of the triangle that is here the side AB is measured. A line CD is marked with the same measurement equal to AB. This CD is marked on the extension of the side of AC. So, AB is equal to CD in length. This point D is not the pivot point of the rotation flap. It is the center of arc of rotation of the rotation flap. So, now with D as the center and the distance AD as the radius, an arc is drawn from the point B. Usually, this arc must be about 5 to 6 times the distance AB to be able to rotate and cover the defect. It does not matter if the flap is not covering the defect at this point. The arc can further be rotated up to the diameter of the circle formed by the extension of the side of the triangular defect AC. The arc of rotation of the flap can only be marked till this point P and not beyond it. This point P is the pivot point of the rotation flap and the line that extends from the pivot point to the leading edge of the flap is called the line of maximum tension. So this is the marking for the classical or conventional rotation flap. The actual incision that is going to be made is shown as a red dotted line. Once the flap is raised, it is given a rotatory movement so that the side CB reaches the side CA and the point B comes to the point A and this will be the resultant suture line. However, all planned flaps may not move so easily to cover the defect. That is because of the fixity of the flap at the pivot point P. In such situations, we need to do what is known as a back cut which moves the pivot point toward the defect. The back cut is a technique to facilitate the rotation of the flap into the defect without causing undue tension on the suture line. If the circulation of the flap is good, the back cut can be made along the diametric line and here the pivot point moves towards the center of the arc reducing tension and the moving end of the flap moves twice the distance of the back cut. We shall see how this happens. Let us start at the point where we find that the rotation flap that we have marked is not able to rotate and cover the defect 
because of the attachment at the pivot point. So there is a need for a back cut. The first technique is otherwise known as the internal back cut. First, the side AB is measured which is represented by X. A distance equal to half of this X that is x by 2 is marked on the diametric line from the point P towards the center of arc of the rotation D. Now when the incision is made incorporating this back cut, there are two factors which are going to help the flap to cover the defect. One half x will be the movement along the arc and the other half x will be the movement of the pivot point towards the center of the arc. Ultimately, the new pivot point P dash will get closer to the center of the arc of rotation and this will be the resultant suture line. The disadvantage of this technique of back cut is that the back cut is made in the pedicle of the flap and hence may compromise the vascularity of the flap. Hence, this back cut must be very prudently used or the second technique of back cut which may be considered as an external back cut can be done. When the marked flap is not able to rotate into the defect because of the fixity at the pivot point and it is not possible to make a back cut along the diametric line to avoid compromising the vascularity of the flap, a triangular piece of skin can be excised on the outer side of the arc that has been made. This triangle must be an equilateral triangle with a side equal to almost the side AB. This is otherwise known as Burrows triangle excision. So now when the flap is mobilized and the surrounding tissues are undermined, the flap can move more comfortably into the defect because the new pivot point P dash has moved closer to the promontory and this will be the resulting suture line. The rotation flap can be used on any part of the body provided the defect is small in size and there is adequate soft tissues or intact and elastic skin surrounding the defect. When planning a rotation flap on the limbs, it is ideal to include the deep fascia to enhance the vascularity of the flaps. It can also be done on the fingers like in this patient who had a grinding machine injury on the little finger. The wound has been debrided. It is almost triangular in shape by itself. The rotation flap has been marked based on the ulnar side of the finger which appears intact. The flap raised and rotated gently into the defect and flap inset done. The flap has healed well. Local flaps are advantages on the fingers for getting back quick function. When planning a rotation flap on the scalp, the rigidity or the inextensibility of the scalp skin must be considered. The use of back cut and scoring the gallia are also important techniques while doing rotation flap for scalp defects. For this electrical burn defect on the scalp, the triangulation has been done and rotation flap marked and the flap raised. The flap has been rotated to cover the defect and flap inset done. The advantage of the rotation flap on the scalp scalp is that there is no alopecia as a secondary defect as occurs when transposition flap is done. The rotation flap can be done on the cheek and the best example is the mustade cheek rotation flap as in this lady with a basal cell carcinoma. The rotation flap is marked and the flap is raised and flap inset is done. Well hidden scars along the natural folds are the advantages of using this rotation flap especially in elder individuals. The rotation flap can also be used on the trunk. It is important to note perforators which can be used to perfuse the flap too. Here the rotation flap is being used for resurfacing a sacral pressure sore. The rotation flap is marked after triangulating the defect the flap is raised and rotated and the final inset is done. There are many modifications for the classical rotation flap. The first is the bilateral rotation flap which consists of two rotation flaps for a single defect which is converted into two triangles. The second modification is the O to Z modification which also consists of two rotation flaps for a single defect. So far we have seen the classical rotation flap and the modifications of this classical rotation flap. However, there are two other designs of the rotation flap known as the Ahuja's template rotation flap and the divine rotation flap. We shall first see how the Ahuja's template rotation flap is designed and marked. <coughs> To understand the template rotation flap described by Dr. Rajiv Ahuja, we shall now 
see the markings for the transposition flap. In a transposition flap, the triangular defect ABC is taken and the point C is extended and from point C along B an extension is made. The distance DA is measured. This is going to be the line of maximal tension. This is extended to cut the line CB at the point E. Now a line is drawn from D which is parallel to line CB and a distance equal to the line CE is marked here. This is F. Now CEFD, this is the transposition flap. This will require a skin graft after it is raised to cover the secondary defect. To mark the template local flap or template rotation flap described by Dr. Hooja, the same triangular defect ABC is marked and the distance equal to AB is marked on the line extending from the point C. Now the line of maximal tension DA is marked. DA is going to be the radius of the circle. Now this point CB is extended and from the point A a rotation arc is marked with the radius equal to DA. This is going to be the radius which is going to be equal in all this. This flap CB extended along the line and the rotation arc that has been marked is going to be the flap. This area is going to be excised. This flap will move into the defect. The point E will reach the point A and this is known as the Ahuja's local template flap. We shall now see what this divine rotation flap is and how it is designed. The divine rotation flap is a flap based on the divine number that is the Fibonacci sequence where each number is equal to the sum of the preceding two numbers. For instance, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 8 is 13, etc. When this ratio is used, you get a spiral which is seen very widely in nature as in the shell of the snail. We shall see how this rotation flap is designed. Like all rotation flaps, we start with the triangulated defect A, B, C. Now a rectangle is formed around this triangular defect as shown. One side of the rectangle is equal to AB. The side of the rectangle adjacent to where the flap is going to be marked is shown as BD. This extension is done such that the distance BD is equal to the point DE and a square is formed here. The square is BFED where all the four sides are equal. The rectangle of the defect and the square we have drawn combined together forms what is known as the golden rectangle. Now the side DE is bisected and the midpoint of this is the point G. The distance from the point G to B is measured. This is going to be the radius of the arc which is going to be drawn with the point G as the center of the arc. This arc is going to form the rotation flap which is otherwise known as the divine rotation flap. I hope you like this video. To see the videos regarding the classification of flap and the introduction to flaps, please go through these links and do subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery.